Hello, my dear ninth graders, and welcome to our English lesson today. My name is Florina Ruste, and I'm a teacher of English at Georgia Koch Book National Bilingual High School in Bucharest. So we are going to spend the next 30 minutes or so together, and I do hope that you're going to enjoy our um, lesson, especially because, as you can see, I'm not alone, so I'm a I'm uh, with a very dear colleague of mine, and actually she is my friend, so. Hi, uh, my name is Olivia Neville, and I am one of the native teachers also at Koch Book, and uh, I'm from London. Oh, perfect introduction to our lesson, because guess what, Olivia, we are going to talk about... Are we talking about London? Oh, yes, of course, about London. Oh, big surprise. So I'm pretty sure that if I were to say these words, the red double-decker, the red phone booth, or the red phone box, or Big Ben, everybody would associate these words with London immediately. Mm -hmm. But as you are from London, and by the way, how long did you live in London before coming to Bucharest? Um, well, I've traveled a lot, but um, pretty much my whole life. Um, and then, yeah, and then I settled here. Mm. So, what are some of the iconic places in London for you? Uh, you mean the touristy places or the non-touristy places? Maybe both. Okay, so the touristy places, I would say um, Millennium Bridge, I would say the Houses of Parliament, Big Ben, uh, Borough Market, uh, Trafalgar Square. And then the non-touristy places, I would say... Um, Ooh, wow, um, the markets, I love the markets. Uh, Camden, even though it's quite touristy. Um, Brixton Market, um, Dalston. Um, Thank you. Thank yeah. you. So would you say that you know quite a lot about London? I'm going to say yes, but I'm sure I'm going to embarrass myself now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's check. So my honey bunnies is it okay if we start with a quiz this way you will get to warm up to the topic a little bit check your knowledge about london and who knows you might be interested in finding out more about this wonderful place actually this is the very purpose of our lesson today to make you uh, feel encouraged to use your english to discover that you can use your english in different ways uh, we have included a lot of activities that you can do uh, later on as well, maybe tomorrow or maybe next week or at any other time in the near future, hopefully. So there will be a little bit of everything for everyone, a little bit of music, a little bit of reading, a little bit of um, dancing, uh, maybe, so plenty of exciting things. Stay with us and uh, let's focus on our quiz first, all right? So here I go. Olivia, I will ask you to help me with the answers, right, okay. because I do want to check your knowledge mm -hmm. about London. So here I go. Okay, just one second. Can you see the handout? Me, yes. Okay, perfect. So again, an iconic place in London, the Buckingham Palace, who hasn't heard um, about it. But the first question goes, who is the only king or queen to have been born and to die at Buckingham Palace? The picture might give you the right clue if you recognize this great man in the picture. Uh, yeah, that's uh, Edward VII. Perfect, thank you. The eldest son of Queen Victoria, well done. Again, another iconic place in London, everybody knows it, the Ferris wheel called the London Eye. London Eye, yeah. Is the, Lon is the London Eye viewing platform the world's tallest Ferris wheel? Um, it isn't, but I don't know what is. That's right, it isn't. I don't know either, but I'm pretty sure that our students will find out after doing a little bit of online research. Mm -hmm. Number three, now this is a really, really interesting place. So first of all, I want to make sure that I'm using the correct pronunciation of this place. Is it Greenwich? Yes, it is Greenwich. Thank you. And what is special about Greenwich? Can you tell us anything about this line here? Um, this is the uh, Greenwich, uh, the Greenwich Mean Time line. 
Okay, and I think that every single tourist is dying, right, to place one foot on this side and the other foot on the other side and then have mm -hmm. their picture taken there, right. This is what I did, I have to confess to doing that. <laughs> All right, uh, the question goes, uh, what did John Harrison invent in the 18th century that stopped travelers getting lost? So it's about the 18th century, not the 21st century, where when we have Google Maps and Waze and God knows what other applications. But back then, that was the... Yeah, I haven't got a clue. Sorry. It's got a very fancy name, the chronometer. The chronometer. Yes. Okay. The next question. Again, Oxford and Cambridge, two well-known places in England. Who hasn't heard um, about these famous universities? And uh, there is this time-honored tradition, the boat race between these um, two colleges or universities. Mm -hmm. The question goes, which rowing race has the longest course? Oxford-Cambridge boat race or Doggett's uh, coat and badge race? Um, I believe it's Doggett's coat and badge race. Thank you, that's right. You are absolutely correct. Well, you do know your London, I have to give you that. Number five. Maybe the picture is quite small, but I'm pretty sure that some of you have already recognized the building. It's the Tower of London. It used to be a castle, and then uh, it uh, was used as a prison as well. And now it is a museum. So if you want to admire um, the crown, um, the crown jewelry, or the crown, the crown jewels, the crown jewels. That's mm -hmm. right. Thank you. This is the place to go. The question is not about the crown jewels, but it's about okay. animals. Which of these animals is not part of the natural history of the Tower of London? Um, well, it's clearly not polar bear. Um, <laughs> surprise, oh. surprise. Um, and, <laughs> uh, it's, uh, the odd one out is Black Adder. Um, but Black Adder is actually the name of a very, very popular BBC comedy show. Um, and the starring role is played by Mr. Bean or Rowan Atkinson. And I was so sure it was the polar bear. But no, you are right. It's the black adder. Mm -hmm. wow. The next picture and the next question. Um, they are about this area in London known as Soho. How did the entertainment district um, get, get its name? I'm tempted to say E, a shout made by hunters. Be brave, Olivia. Yes, that is the correct answer. It is E, and you can find out more about this um, at the end of the quiz, where all answers um, are displayed with plenty of details. And now let's go to another well-known place in London, Cannon Street. After what or whom is Cannon Street named? This one I definitely know, uh, D, candle makers. That's right, candle makers. And please, my dear students, pay attention to this word, cannons. It has nothing to do with this word, right? So this one refers to either a set of principles or maybe even a sacred book, right? That's why it appears in um, connection with priests. The next one, let's go back to the Tower of London. In which century were the most people executed inside that notorious prison, the Tower of London? Remember, at one point I said something about the Tower of London being used as a prison. Uh, I would say the 20th century. And you would be right. Mm -hmm. who, who would have imagined that, yes, the 20th century is the bloody century for the Tower of London? And, oh, prisons again, really sorry. <laughs> Uh, but this time, there is a very positive connotation to this place. Which large London prison has a public restaurant run by prisoners? And if I'm not mistaken, it is part of a charity. Yeah, that's um, Brixton, Brixton Prison in South London. Um, it is part of a charity as well. And um, there's also uh, a Gordon Ramsay reality series from 2012, uh, where he went to the prison and... Um, kind of got in, involved in the same kind of prisoner rehabilitation and set up a bakery called the Bad Boys Bakery, which to the best of my knowledge is still up and running. Mm, good job. Imagine prisoners making your cakes. 
and the fan uh, and the restaurant looks quite fancy. It looks nice. I'd eat there actually. I'd like to. Maybe we should do that for a school trip. Oh, why not? Definitely. And here we come to our very last question. Which secret ministry is located in this area? The guy in the picture should point um, you in the right direction. 100%. This one's very close to my heart. Um, this is the Ministry of Magic. Ah, Minister of Magic as in the Ministry of Magic in Harry Potter? Uh, the very same. Ah, and close to your heart because? Um, well, Harry Potter is close to my heart in many ways. Um, being a British kid brought up on Harry Potter. Um, but I, uh, before I came back to, to Bucharest, I was a Harry Potter tour guide for See Your City and Get Your Guide in London. Ah, thank you for mentioning that. What would you say if I were to take you and our students on such a tour around London today? Wouldn't that be really nice? That would be amazing. All right, let's do that. And um, we're going to watch a video featuring Olivia as our tour guide today. But before watching the video, I would really like you to take a look at this activity, which will familiarize you with some words that Olivia will be using in her presentation. So as you can see, uh, you, you first need to unscramble the letters and then you have to match each word with the right definition. That would be a good time for you to stop, to, to pause um, the recording, focus on the task for a minute or two, and then come back to our lesson. All right? So, one, two, three, four, five. Our imaginary two minutes are over. So let's check your answers. And I think that I'm going to start with the definitions, actually and then come up with the right word. So, which is group potions in this? Olivia, can you help me? Yeah, after I sneeze, sorry. Um, <laughs> well, it's fine, about I'm okay. About um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, um, so which is group potions in this? Um, that's a cauldron. Yes, all right, so our number two here. Uh, what's the tube? Uh, the underground. The underground, right? Yeah. That's, what, that's what people in London call it. Yeah. Uh, when you avoid something by a quick sudden movement, something like this. You dodge it. Thank you. Dodge. Yes, number six. Where do you wait for your train? Uh, on the platform. On the platform. And the type of fabric with a distinctive soft feel would be? Velvet. Velvet, excellent. And now Bucharest has got six districts and London has got such districts as well or administrative units. And one such unit is called a? A borough. A borough, thank you, all right. So now I think that we are ready for watching our video. And one more thing um, before this happens, as promised, here you have the answers to our quiz with plenty of details. So that would be a very good opportunity for you, um, um, Honey Bunnies, to practice your reading skills. And should you be interested in finding out more about these uh, places or personalities or facts, be my guest. Now the internet has become our best friend and I'm pretty sure that um, you will discover a lot of amazing things. All right, so I will just scroll down the page. And again, if you want to pause the recording, read everything, that would be lovely. All right, and here we come to the end of it. Perfect, okay. So, 
Now we are ready for our video and I'm going to stop sharing this document. While you're watching, uh, please make a note of as many places as you can recognize or um, sometimes you can see some signs with certain words um, describing the place. And uh, when the video is over, I would like you to be able to remember um, at least three different type of places which um, are featured in the video. All right, so here we go. London can be a magical place, full of fantastic discoveries. Who to better tell you where to find them than our Get Your Guide Originals tour guide? Hi, my name's Olivia. I'm a teacher and a Harry Potter tour guide for Get Your Guide in London. <laughs> so unfortunately, we're kind of lacking actual magic hats in England. So personally, I have a black velvet witch's hat. the first book is a birthday present for my 10th birthday ever since then I kind of grew up with Harry you know um, it just kind of made me feel as though there was a different world out there which in turn was a good and a bad thing because it meant that I got out of my head but then it also meant that I lived in my head a bit more because I was waiting for my Hogwarts letter that never came by the way one of the best places or the best place in the world to discover the magic of Harry Potter because lots of scenes from the films were filmed here. You can visit the area of the Ministry, you can visit the red phone boxes, you can visit Diagon Alley, Leadenhall Market, you can visit the site of the Leaky Cauldron, walk over Millennium Bridge and dodge the Death Eaters, or you can walk along South Bank. See the street get narrower and narrower as it goes down, but be careful because there might be a little Death Eater floating around. Somewhere on every street corner, if you're looking for the magic, you'll find it. And also you can come on a walking tour with me and have a, the best two hours of your life. <laughs> Olivia, how are you feeling now after watching this video? Yeah, good. It, um, it kind of makes me miss home, but good. It was fun. Lots of fun. Okay. So uh, let's go back to my question about some places which were featured in the video. Do you recall any? Me? Um, yeah. There was Leadenhall Market. There was um, Diagon Alley. Um, there was a uh, nocturne alley, there was uh, uh, the tube, the underground. Right, the Tower of London. Also. Point, right, the Millennium Bridge. Mm -hmm. Millennium Bridge, yeah. Mm -hmm. And plenty of other places. So are there any other tours that you would recommend? Yeah, I would recommend uh, the Jack the Ripper tour, um, which is uh, also a Get Your Guides, uh, Get Your Guides tour. Um, where you can go and discover um, the back streets of East London and Whitechapel and um, follow in the footsteps of the, the murderer who is still yet to be, uh, we still don't know who it was, um, still, still yet to be um, discovered and uh, the, 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 the unfortunate victims. But it's very cool, especially at night because it's an evening tour and it's quite creepy and East London is a creepy place at night. So. Um, yeah, and uh, also the silent disco tours. Ah, that sounds a little bit more cheerful than Jack the Ripper mm -hmm. tour. So what happens on such a tour? I don't know exactly because I haven't been on one yet, but from what I've seen, um, you have a guide, you have a big group of, uh, you know, of, uh, of tourists and everybody wears headphones and they dance around the streets. Um, on a guided walking tour and it looks like loads of fun and it's something that I'm going to do when I go back. 
Okay, now let's do that right now, okay? So I'm picturing myself, I'm visualizing myself standing on that Millennium Bridge and doing some crazy moves with people staring at me. Would that be all right? Shall we give yeah. it a try? Okay, so Honey Bunnies again, here we have a very, very short, um, let's say, dance for you, which will energize you a little bit after, uh, you know, sitting on a chair for quite a long period of time. It might be good to stand up and stretch a little bit or um, dance, why not? So this is called um, the hand jive dance. You can use your hands or again, as I, as I said before, if you want to stand up, be my guest. And uh, there is a sequence of only five moves. So hopefully you will be able to remember them. If we make mistakes, it's all right. Nobody's watching, it's just happening. So it goes like this. The first one, slap your thighs. All right. Then clap your hands. Next, criss cross slap hands. The next one, number four, keep fists together, one above the other. And finally, let's do the hitchhiker, right? And as you can see, you have to do the same move twice, okay? So one more time, slap your thighs, clap your hands, criss cross, hit fists, and the hitchhiker thing. Okay, so are you ready? I love dancing. So please excuse me if I'm going to make a complete fool of myself, but I can't help it. Okay, here we go. Maybe you can do something like this with your desk mate, okay? Or who knows, maybe you can come up with your own choreography, with your own mood, and you can break the monotony of a club simply by dancing a little bit, and you will see how energized and, um, well, you know, how good you will feel after that. Are you feeling energized, Olivia? Absolutely. Are you feeling inspired as well? Somewhat. Somewhat. I'm always inspired. Oh, me too. I feel very inspired. And because you are my dear friend, I feel so inspired that I have actually composed a poem for you. I'm touched. I am too. Of course you are. All right. So for those of you who are interested in writing, here we have one activity based on creative writing. It's quite easy. Don't get scared. And believe it or not, you are going to write a poem. It's a very simple one and it's called a thin cane and it consists of only five lines. That means you will have to pay attention to the correct structure of each line. Let me show you the poem that I have written for Olivia. All right, here I go. And here you also have the instructions for our hand jive dance. If you want to keep practicing at home or if you want to come up with different moves, be my guest, not a problem. You can use these just as well. And this is my poem for you, my dear Olivia, and for our students here. Mm -hmm. My friend, 
fun, laughter, tears. You are always there for me. No one listens to me like you, partner. Thanks. A moment of silence, I appreciate it. <laughs> so let's focus on the structure of the thinking right now. And then who knows, maybe you will feel inspired to write your own poem and I will tell you what the subject of the poem um, should be. So if you pay attention to this one, my friend, line one, you will notice that there are two syllables and this line gives the subject of the poem. So it's not really the title, it just gives the subject of the poem. In line two, there are four syllables. You are always there. Oh, sorry, fun, laughter, tears. I always mix. I always, I always make uh, this mistake. So four syllables, and this line describes the subject of the poem in a few words. Line three, and now of course that you um, realize what the pattern is. Right, two, four, six, six syllables. The line is related to an action or actions that have to do with the subject. You are always there for me. In line four, there are eight syllables. And this is where you can express your feeling or feelings about the subject. And the last one, line five, consists of two syllables only. It names the subject again, but this time you have to use a different word. It can be a metaphor, it can be a symbol, it can be a synonym, whatever, as long as it reinforces the same idea expressed in the first line. So this is the structure. Is it difficult? No. no, not really. But this is a really, really good opportunity for you to use every single vocabulary resource that you have. You can use all those words in a very, um, in, in an imaginative way, I would say. Plus, the sound of the poem is really nice, the rhythm. So that's why you need to pay attention to the correct number of syllables. So as maybe you have already guessed, our today's topic for our thinking is London. London. <laughs> and again, this is um, where you should pause the recording, spend a couple of minutes on your poem, give it a try. If you're not happy with it, just give it more time until you feel ready to put the, word, the right words um, on, on the sheet of paper. And uh, you can also submit your poems to us. We have this page on, face, on Facebook called From Kosh Book with Love, and you can leave a message there uh, or um, the poem itself, and I will make sure that I will post all your poems on our page. Um, if you are not really happy with our topic, London, here I have other suggestions for you. And as I said, you can use these um, suggestions in order to spend some time practicing your English a bit later. And you can choose a topic which is very close to your heart or you feel that you can personally relate to. It can be my dream, my space, daydream, fly high, purple, future, happy, freedom, water, pumpkin, that's a funny one, silver, perfect. And as you can see, we have those two syllables, which are key I mean, the um, to our line. All right, good. So, see that. so next, after doing this kind of creative writing activity, maybe you feel ready for a little bit of speaking or another type of creating of creative um, activity. This is where we have a list of questions going back to one of those topics for your scene canes, like um, the perfect place or the perfect color for you. And here we have my perfect holiday. And what we are going to do is 
Olivia is going to um, ask you the questions. She will pause in between uh, the two questions so that you will have time to either answer the question out loud. If you want to, you can record yourselves, listen to the recording a little bit later. Uh, and check your pronunciation, your intonation, how fluent you were. You can practice again. Or if you are the creative type, the more introvert type, uh, you can simply draw some images stirred by these questions. So, Olivia, are you ready? Yeah, just one uh, thing. You still see my video? Uh, not now. No, I can't either. No, 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 that, but that's okay. Don't worry about that. Okay, so are you ready? Yeah. Hey. So, uh, my perfect holiday. Where were you? How long was the holiday? Who were you with? What kind of light was there? What temperature did you have? Uh, sorry. Oh, sorry, no. Uh, what weather did you have? Mm -hmm. What temperature was it? What new sounds do you remember hearing? Did you see anything you'd never seen before? Um, that's it, no? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was the last one. All right. So Again, as you can see, you can practice these questions um, at some other time as well. And instead of talking about your perfect holiday, you can change the subject matter. And for example, you can talk about my perfect, um, ex my, my, my perfect, my perfect what? Um, a great event um, that you remember or um, some adventure or um, a trip, a journey, or a conversation that you had with someone. So you can choose um, a number of topics and uh, give your answers to these questions. And this way you will check whether your fluency um, improves uh, or whether your pronunciation is getting better or if you are able to use more complex vocabulary or more complex structures. Speaking about structures, Let's take a closer look at some of these questions. And I'm sure that you recognize what kind of structures I mean. For example, what weather did you have? What temperature was it? That would be, of course, the simple past form. And in the last one, did you see anything you'd never seen before? That you'd comes obviously from that you had never seen before. And that would be our past perfect. So for those of you who are that kind of mathematical learner, who enjoy grammar, uh, who enjoy doing um, exercises, now here we have one final activity. If, um, any, if one of you is not interested or if more of you are not interested in this activity, of course, this is where you um, simply um, stop um, the recording and take a break. Um, or if you are interested in checking your knowledge, let's go. So this is um, our revision of verb tenses. You know that in, in the ninth grade, we start by revising these verb tenses and then we continue using them uh, throughout the year because every single new structure is based on these verb tenses in one way or another. And Oh, you will see that depending on how um, advanced uh, you are in terms of your, um, your command of uh, the language, uh, some of these verb tenses are quite easy to identify, but there might be two or three structures which are a little bit tricky, right? They are a little bit more sophisticated. Take a minute, please. Read the text and try to come up with the correct forms and then we'll check, all right? So again, this is when you should pause the recording, think about 
your choices. Write them down. One, two, three, four, five. Right, time is up. So let's check. Olivia, please correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. how, how do you feel about grammar? How difficult is it for you as a native teacher to teach grammar? Being honest, mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, I think I speak for many native or at least English speakers uh, when I say that my, uh, your grasp of English grammar is probably far superior to mine. <laughs> oh. oh, thank you. <laughs> this was a bit <laughs> unexpected. All right. it's, no, it's, it's uh, all, no, all jokes aside, it's not my favorite topic, but it's necessary. And um, grammar can be made fun uh, with puzzles and word searches and activities like this and the like. It can. All right. So let's quickly check your answers. Uh, I love the story of how my parents met. Simple past, no worries, no traps, nothing tricky about it. But now let's take a look at the second sentence where you have that keyword, just. So this word shows that we have two actions. One of them had already happened. So the correct choice would be my dad had just turned 22. The next one doesn't refer to something that my father used to do in the past. It was an action in progress at that time. The correct answer is, in this case, my dad had just turned 22 and was traveling around England. One day, now this is where I start telling the story and we have a sequence of actions in the past. One day he took the train to London and as he was very tired, he fell asleep that kind of sequence of actions in the past. The next one, this is really tricky. You have again a key word, hardly, which forces you to use a different word there. So you don't continue the sentence with the subject as you would normally do. Here you need to use the auxiliary. And again, you have those two actions, waking up and realizing, which are not simultaneous. Hardly had he woken up when he realized that they were in London. This is a very sophisticated structure in English. It requires an inversion. First, you use the auxiliary and then the subject. So he realized that they were in London and he rushed to get off the train. Again, I go back to my uh, story, a sequence of actions in the past. He saw a policeman on the platform and he suddenly realized he, this is one action that again had already happened. He suddenly realized he had left his bag with all his money and the passport on the train. The sequence of actions in the past again, he ran back to the train and there she was the most beautiful girl, he, this is where we refer to his entire life, right? From the moment when he was born until that moment in the past. The most beautiful girl he had ever seen holding his bag. Her name was Elizabeth and it was love at first glance. Here we come to another sophisticated structure. We have that dreaded word, if. Please remember the rule after if you don't usually use will or would. So if my father hadn't been so absent-minded, I wouldn't be here today telling you this story while waiting for my train to Hogwarts on the same platform where everything started. Yes the very one, platform nine three quarters, and yes, I am a witch. <laughs> All right, 
So again, I will stop sharing this document. And this is when we have to say goodbye to our students. Hopefully you have fallen in love with, uh, with London, you have fallen in love with English, you will continue to study English both on your own and at school. You will feel um, encouraged to do your own research online, find the right activities for you, something that you find uh, relevant and useful at the same time and you also enjoy doing. So feel free to listen to some good songs in English, feel free to keep writing in English. And in addition to those poems that you can submit to us, Olivia has another suggestion for you in terms of um, practicing your writing skills. Ah, um, yeah, I, um, I was thinking that maybe the students could do some uh, personal research, some independent research oh. uh, on the murders of Jack the Ripper um, and the, the entire murder case that surrounds it, which is uh, very grisly and very gruesome, but also very interesting. And um, maybe they could write a short story for us, either from a third person or first person perspective. And um, they can hand it in to us, no? We can have a look. Oh, of course, that would be absolutely great. Mm -hmm. And we do hope that you will add a bit of magic to everything that you do, and you will simply well, enjoy every single moment. Okay, that's all for today. Bye. Bye.